Greetings to you all. Here you see the Turbo 486 computer, uh, supposedly MCA brand. I have had this computer for around a year now. Uh, you may remember that somebody, uh, a teacher at my high school, uh, dropped this thing off at the computer lab. He didn't want it anymore. And the computer teacher is like, well, yeah, we have no use for it. It's probably just going to be junked if it stays here. So, of course, I got to take this thing home, no problem at all. And you can see videos. Uh, I've made videos uh, of a tour of this thing inside and out. And I think I did a boot up to the bio screen as well. But I have never done a software demonstration video. And for that, I am deeply sorry. Uh, other things happened. I went to university, became very busy, and I just never got the time to uh, film a software demonstration, and then uh, the hard drive spontaneously corrupted for no reason, so I had to fix that. That's all fixed now, and uh, this thing is in good working order again and ready to be videoed. And it's worth noting that this is a rare sight. My bedroom door is open. Mom is gone right now, I'm able to have the door open, and uh, yeah, so take a good look, because this doesn't happen often. So, uh, I'll recap on the hardware specs of this computer. This computer has an AMD AM5X86 processor running at 133 megahertz. It goes down to apparently 20 megahertz when the turbo's turned off. It has 64 megabytes of EDO RAM, and it has a 1.2 gigabyte IDE hard drive. It also has, uh, originally it had a, I think it was 16x CD-ROM drive. It's still working good and fine, but I've replaced it with my HP CD Writer Plus, uh, which is a 32x CDRW drive, because I have a CDR I need to read on this computer. It has all the software that I've installed on it. And the original drive doesn't like CDRs that much. So I've put this drive in, works great. Also has a 3.5 inch floppy disk drive, 1.4 megabyte. Inside it, it has an ATI Mach 64 PCI video card. This was ATI's last video card not to have 3D acceleration. And it was also their last video card to have full support for Windows 3.1. I also have a Creative Labs Sound Blaster AWE64 ISA sound card. Creative Labs last sound card to have full support for Windows 3.1. And I have an early 2000s Realtek 100 megabit Ethernet card, PCI, that amazingly uh, has full support for DOS and Windows 3.1. And then, of course, the software I have on this, I have MS-DOS 6.22 installed, I have Windows for Workgroups 3.11 installed, and a bunch of other software, which, of course, I'm going to demonstrate in this video. This computer is the epitome of a cheap, crappy computer you could buy in the mid-1990s. It's based on a generic, huge case. And it has that fancy LED display that displays the CPU clock speed. Although really, it can display anything you want because it's no, it's not intelligent in any way. Uh, you just set what it displays using a bunch of jumpers on the back of the display. It has a lock, which is not a case lock. It's a keyboard lock. Of course, it has the turbo button, your reset, your power. It's based on what was literally the cheapest motherboard you could buy in 1996, one of the cheapest at least, uh, a PC chips motherboard with the infamous fake cache. Uh, and while that does deplete performance slightly, um, I am happy to have such a motherboard because it's a really great conversation piece and uh, it's just plain hilarious. And of course, uh, I don't know who MCA is, nothing comes up when you Google them. I'm going to assume that they were a small shop somewhere uh, that just built custom built computers because of course this computer is, has no brain blah, blah, blah. this computer has no name brand um, it's just a bunch of parts thrown together in a generic case and uh, anyway I really love this computer love the LED display it's really cool a really great 486 class computer um, and that's another reason it's the epitome of a crappy computer you'd buy in the mid-1990s it's based on a 486 even though the Pentium had already been out for years and the Pentium 2 was already on the horizon 
So, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Of course, only other things I've ever done to this computer, I oiled the fans. The fans were originally seized up. They work great now. It's got a 250 watt uh, power supply. It is a name brand, although I don't recall what it was. It's nothing obvious. And yeah, that's about it. So, without further ado, I'll turn it on. Seagate hard drive. Here we go. Here comes the sound card driver. Now it's testing the memory. Here comes the CD-ROM driver. More sound card stuff. There's the network card driver. There's the smart drive. And there's the mouse driver. And now we're at the C prompt. I'll do a version command. 6.22. I'll do a directory command. 1.2 gigabyte hard drive. We have just over a gigabyte free. And now, um, actually, I wonder if this has a... Uh, I forget what it's called. It might be MS Info. Look at the technical info. No, it's not MS Info. There's a program I want to bring up that shows all the technical information. I'm going to bring it up and I'll be right back. I found it. It's MSD, Microsoft Diagnostics. So I'll run that first. And here it is. Gives you all sorts of cool information. American Megatrends to BIOS Maker, 486DX. Serial mouse. Forgot to mention, uh, this does this computer does not have PS2 ports, so you have to use a serial mouse and an AT keyboard. And for an AT keyboard, I'm using this Acer keyboard, which is a really nice keyboard because it's very clicky. And although it's not a buckling spring keyboard, um, it is just rubber dome switches, it feels incredibly nice to type on, as well as an IBM Model M, in my opinion. So if we press P for pewter, there's all that stuff. This computer's from 1996, the BIOS was a 1994 version. There's that. Whoa, there's our memory stuff. Video card made in 96. Uh, it's not connected to any network right now. Serial mouse, Microsoft compatible. Game adapter, that's the Sound Blaster card, because it has a joystick port. There's our disk drives. Serial, two serial ports, one parallel port. There's Windows. And yeah, that's about it really, so I'll get out of that. Exit please. And now we'll type the magic word that everybody loves to say, win. Start Windows. And here it comes. I don't have speakers hooked up, uh, so you won't hear a startup sound, but that's okay. Nothing much to hear anyway. Hello. It takes a while to start up because the Ethernet card is checking for a network. And if a network was connected, it would then get the DHCP information, which takes many seconds. Windows 3.1 is not fast with networking stuff at all. Here we come. There's the Microsoft Office uh, toolbar up there. I'll get to that later. But here we are. 
Um, let me tell you something. Windows 3.1, uh, before I got this computer, I, like probably most people my age, have only ever used it in an emulator, in which it's not very useful. Uh, but let me tell you, when you get a computer with a video card and a sound card and network card that's actually compatible with Windows 3.1, you can do an awful lot. I mean, you can, I've been on the internet on this thing, and I'll demonstrate that to you here today in this video. Um, but yeah, it, it works just fantastic. I mean, a compatible video card lets you get all sorts of colors, so you can view full color JPEG images and stuff. You know, it's, it's actually quite useful once you get uh, the appropriate software installed. But uh, yeah, here it is. Apparently memory has 233 megabytes free. It must have virtual memory set up. I'll have to turn that off since I don't have much use for that. But uh, you can see I have my program manager set up with quite small boxes because I have a lot of stuff installed. That's what I like about Windows 3.1. You know, all your programs are immediately right in front of you. But uh, there's that. And we can open our accessories. There's the time. It's actually correct. Yeah, the mouse is kind of sticky. It's it's uh, unfortunately it's my only mouse that actually works on the serial port with a serial to PS2 adapter. So gonna have to bear with me. Uh, and then in this box I have the sound and video card drivers. ATI Desktop is the video card configurator. Is that a word? I don't know. Anyway, uh, it has all this stuff, most of which I don't know what it does, but Flex Desk lets you set the color and resolution and stuff and I have it running on 800 by 600 with 16-bit color uh, this card does not support 32-bit color but I can put it all the way up to 1600 by 1200 my monitor doesn't support that though oh actually it won't do it anyway it'll only go up to 1280 by 1024 because uh, to get to 1600 by 1200 it'd have to kick into 16 color mode which apparently this can't do but a cool thing is, uh, the real resolution can be 1280 by 1024, but the actual size of the desktop that it can access is still 1600 by 1200. So how it works is it just shows uh, the top left of the screen, and then when you move your mouse to the corner, it shuffles along. But uh, it's pretty cool. So if you go to advanced, you have that stuff. Screen adjustment. I have it on 60 hertz for camera compatibility. And, uh... Yeah, and then there's let you do this crazy stuff. Yeah. Wind switch. Wind switch is some fancy feature. I no longer remember what it does. Actually, I never learned what it does. Don't know what any of this stuff does. Oh, it actually has a uh, power management support. That's cool for a Visa monitor. Visa is a wonderful thing. There's that. And then the sound card stuff, which, you know, it came with a mixer so you can adjust the volume. Uh, it has a control panel so you can set fancy MIDI stuff. Now, speaking of which, I need help um, with the sound card. Now, of course, the sound card has both an FM synthesizer and a wavetable synthesizer on it. And under Windows 95 and Windows 98 on this computer, I'm able to access both synthesizers. But in Windows 3.1, I'm only able to access the FM synthesizer. If I try to use the MIDI synthesizer, it says that the device does not exist, and it just doesn't work. Even though if I exit into DOS and run the diagnostic program, it tests both synthesizers just fine. So I don't know what's up with that. Anyway, next, I have Microsoft Office 4.3 installed, the last version to run on uh, Windows 3.1. So we'll open up Microsoft Word here. Last year in grade 12, I actually typed a document for a class on this computer using Microsoft Word 6.0. Um, it was a, uh, a, a movie review. I had to write a movie review about a page long and I did it uh, on this computer using this program. Microsoft Word 6.0C 1993 and uh, yeah it works just fine. It's still incredibly useful. You know you don't need all that fancy ribbon crap. I mean it has all the basic stuff that uh, you'd want. You know I believe it has WordArt. I 
think it has word art. Let me see. Okay, I lied. Maybe I don't think it has word art yet. Let me search in the help. As you can see, it's not too terribly slow. Get some good speed out of this computer. It's actually just as fast, maybe even faster under Windows 95. How do you search? Search. Makes sense. Word. Ah, oh, there is word art. Cool. How do you do it? Da, 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 da. From the insert menu, choose object. Okay. See, not quite as user friendly, but uh, very useful. Everything's all nicely laid out in front and in menus. Uh, let's see. Word art. Your text here. The Maritime Man. Okay, uh, update display. There it is. Insert symbol. Uh, it just lets me do that. Okay, now what do I do to make it fancy looking? That's no fun. I gotta go back into the help. There it is. Select the create new tab. What? Okay, let, let me try this again. Object, I should read the whole darn thing, but I'm too stubborn. Oh well, it's fun to experiment. Oh, there is no create. Ah, uh, hold on. Eh. Get out. Object. Yeah, create new. Okay, let me go back to the help. Create new. Did that. From the word art menu and toolbar. Oh dear. Word art menu. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh, wait. Oh, what? That sure as heck doesn't look right. Um. Ah, okay. And I gotta stretch it out. I think. Get out. Yeah. Good grief. Not very user friendly. Um. That's all it says. Okay, um, so that's great, except it's squished right to... Uh, let me see... Ah, size. Okay, now it's so big that it's outside the box, but I can't make the box bigger. Ah, here we go! Well, there's an E. Let me see if I can edit that. Eh. No. I just want to make the text smaller. Yeah, sure, what the heck. Ah! There you go. And of course this has support for true, true type fonts. Windows 3.1 introduced that feature. I think it was. I don't think 3.0 had it. But uh, yeah, there you go. No fancy colors or anything. Uh, but uh, there you go nonetheless. So we'll get out of that. And Microsoft Excel, you know, just Excel, version 5.0. See, back in the early days of Microsoft Office, Office itself had a version number, but uh, all the individual Office, Office applications had different version numbers. For Office 4.3, it had Word 6.0, Excel 5.0, and I think PowerPoint 4.0. But uh, yeah, there's Excel. Uh, ooh. Let's make a graph. I'm going to make a nice fancy pie chart and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I have some random information with uh, no meaning whatsoever. And if we go to insert, actually I should highlight this stuff. I took information technology in high school, which was, uh, actually that was the technical name of the course. The real name of it was office technology, where you learned how to use Excel. And I know, I knew, excuse me, a lot about Excel. I forget a lot of it now, but uh, then again, I was using uh, Excel 2007 as well, or no, 2010. Um, insert chart on this sheet. Okay, yeah, sure. What I'm going to do, just for the heck of it, I'm going to turn turbo off. Because having turbo off really does slow things down, so you'll get to watch it draw the... Uh, have a hard time drawing the chart. I'm going to do a 3D pie. Mmm, pie. 
Uh, yeah, let's go all out. Yeah. Here you can see it, uh, it, it. You can actually watch the window scroll down as it draws it. Um, that wasn't very good. There we go. Chart title. Pi. Ooh, in capital. Oh, I have caps lock on. Pi in capitals. I'm yelling pi. Add a legend. Yes, because it'll slow things down even more. Go. Well, that wasn't too terribly slow. Uh, if I drag it around, oh yeah, there's no live dragging, but I can do this. Now, can I... I should be able to edit the pot. Eh. Default chart, what's that do? Ah! Well, that's not as fun. Oh, it, it lets you switch between uh, chart things. That's pretty cool. Uh, format object. I think I can change the... Uh, you sh I should be able to tilt the pie, but uh, maybe that didn't appear till newer versions. Ah, oh, who cares? So there's Excel. Save changes, no. Ah, uh, let's turn Turbo back on. Microsoft Query. Ah, uh, this is it. I was looking at this last night. I'm going to open it up here. Microsoft Query, uh, I have no clue how to use it, but it's some program where you can assign, like, I don't know, categories to database information and stuff. I don't know, but here's the weird thing about Microsoft Query. You see it has this welcome thing here to uh, help you out, and it has some typos in it, and an entire sentence that makes absolutely no sense. Get a look at this. Uh, first of all, for Microsoft, they have Microsoft. But uh, here it talks about it. Now I'll just read through this. Microsoft Query for Windows comes with sample data you can use to learn how to design and work with queries. Makes sense? Uh, the sample data is for a fictitious company called Northwind Traders, which imports and exports specialty foods from around the world. That makes sense? Now listen to this. Although this data isn't available with Microsoft Query for the Macintosh, you'll still find the examples helpful as you learn Microsoft Query. That sentence makes absolutely no sense. First of all, since this is Query for Windows, why would it bother saying, oh, this data isn't available for the Macintosh in the first place? Second of all, if it's saying this data isn't available. Why, why does it say, although it's not available for the Mac, you'll still find the examples helpful? Are they saying Mac users will find this data helpful since they don't have it on the Mac? Or I don't know, it makes no sense. Although it isn't available for the Macintosh, you'll still find the examples helpful as you learn Microsoft Query. That makes very little sense to me. And for that, I'm closing this and this. You try and make sense of that. Uh, PowerPoint. 4.0. Ta-da. And blank presentation. Double click to add graph. Oh, I should have kept uh, Excel open. Oh, well. Hello. Wonder what I can do here. Ah, it comes with a sample chair. That's pretty cool. Ooh, colorful. And now we press F5. Oh, F5 used to be the presentation key on newer versions. I don't know what it is here. Slideshow. Hello. East, west, north. First quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. If that's dollars, then this company's going under the toilet. Although they did see a boost to $90 in the third quarter. Oh, that's pretty cool. Get out of that. I did not ask for help. And, uh, yeah. This would actually be very useful, you know. Uh, when you get my age and you get into university and stuff and you have to make professional PowerPoint presentations, it's frowned upon to use, you know, fancy graphics and animations and stuff. So an older version of PowerPoint, uh, would actually work just fine. Because then you don't have access to all that crap. Although the problem is, see, they frown upon having fancy backgrounds, too. 
This program, being from the 1990s, has some pretty garish looking backgrounds. Uh, I'll find one here. Oh yeah. So 90s, and it changed the graph color too, now it's fancy pastel. We've gone all the way back to the 80s now with the pastel colors. Let's get out of here before we have a nostalgia attack. No. Goodbye. Uh, PowerPoint viewer. I wonder if this has sample PowerPoints. Default. Oh, that's funny. Cute pencil in the corner. Samples. Aha. Whoa. Instructions for using flowcharts. Oh, I'm going to turn off the turbo. You'll get to watch it draw the next slide like a slug. <laughs> Maybe that's an actual animation effect. Maybe it's supposed to work like that. Oh, that's pretty cool. See, it's nice you don't have all these flowing gradient colors and stuff. You know, the information is right there. Solid colors, black text. I like it. Turbo back on. And, uh, oh, that looks fun. See that? Turn turbo back off for the fun of it. Woo! And it's nice to have a video card so you can see all the colors. MS Draw Color Palette. Colors that dither nicely. Thanks. Colors that do not dither. Oh, that's fun. Timelines. Ah, oh, these look like, uh, you know what these are? These are, uh, Gantt charts. I, in one of my classes at university, I had to learn about these. They're very useful uh, devices for project planning. This is, this is a Gantt chart. Cool. Yeah. I'm gonna turn turbo back on. Ah, faster. Done. Okay, let's get out of that. Uh, yeah, that's it for Microsoft Office. Now this thing up here, I'm not sure what it actually does. Oh, apparently it lets you open Word. Could I assume this one opens Excel? Yeah, there's Excel, PowerPoint, and what's this? Find file. Oh, it's got a nice little uh, file searcher there. And lets you search for anything. Cool, that's useful to have it on the desktop, because otherwise you gotta go to File Manager and uh, its search function doesn't work that great. It does the job, but it's kind of hard to use. Then this last button, uh, it just lets you choose anything from menu. Microsoft Office 4.3. All right, get out of that. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye. Next we have games. I've installed a bunch of games on here. Actually, they all came from one program called the Microsoft Best of Windows Entertainment Pack. Uh, but first, the standard ones. We have Hearts, which I've always wanted to learn how to play, and a ladybug still flying above me. Uh, but I have no clue how to play, even though I've tried to learn. Goodbye. Uh, Minesweeper, which is always fun. I'm quite good at that. Solitaire. Now, uh, the first modern computers I ever used uh, were when I started kindergarten, and those computers were not unlike this one. Uh, they were roughly spec the same, and they ran Windows 3.1. And they all had uh, this game, Ski Free. And you can actually go on the internet, if you just Google Ski Free, you can download it. Uh, they've made a new version that runs on Windows 95 and subsequent versions. Although the old version probably does just fine, but the new one's uh, more compatible, I guess. But uh, I played Ski Free a lot as a very young child, and it's a very fun game. 
Um, not much point to it. All you do is you use the arrow keys and you steer this guy. And you just literally ski free. Oop, I slipped on a bump. Get on the rainbow things, you jump. And there was something to make you speed up. I think it's S? No? Oh, hit a tree. But here's the problem. Uh, you're skiing carefree. Lovely. Hitting rocks, bashing your head. Probably doing enough to die ten times. And not a care in the world. And then all of a sudden, something comes along that you do not expect. And whenever I was a kid and I played this game, and it came along, I nearly crapped myself. And nothing has really changed 15 years later. But uh, you'll see it when it comes along. We So much fun. There's also a score. Uh, my score is negative 57 right now. Because it just goes down with time. But uh, it goes up when you do stunts and stuff. Thanks. Gives you your high score. And you can keep going. You do flips and stuff while you're in the air. Using the arrow keys. Ah yes! All of a sudden this bastard comes along. Jumps out of nowhere. And devours you almost instantly. And then jumps victoriously. Dang nature, you scary. Although there's nothing natural about that at all. Um, so yeah, they're ski free. Ski until you get eaten by a horrible robot slash monster thing. Tons of fun for the whole family. Um, yeah, other than that, um, I don't know how to play these games, so I'm not even going to bother opening them. Ooh, it does come with Free Cell, a game that uh, became standard on Windows 95, but they made it available for Windows 3.1. And I am not very good at this game. My mother's phenomenal at it. She beats one game after the other. You resign. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, da, da, da. I think there's, yeah, there's Tetris. I am good at that. Microsoft, Tetris, 1990. New game. What? It, it starts with it. Uh, that's not right. Starting level, uh, starting row zero. New. Haha, -ha, here we go. Cat's coming back. I am phenomenal at Tetris. Taking after Dad, because he was phenomenal at Tetris. I wonder if you can save a game and come back later. I might want to finish this. I can pause. There you go, I'll pause and... Uh, Minimize it and come back later and finish it. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to show you for that. Uh, in network and internet, like I said, this has a network card. I have gotten on the internet on this. Also, I'm able to share files. I'm also I, I'm able to send files from the ThinkPad to this computer. I have the hard drive on this computer shared, so when I plug it into my ThinkPad, uh, I am able to see the hard drive and send files to it and read files. And uh, actually, I'll demonstrate that right now. Alright, so I'm here on the ThinkPad. And I have the uh, Turbo 486 connected to the Ethernet port. And nothing comes up. Well, the reason nothing comes up is I haven't logged on to the network. Indeed, unlike newer versions of Windows, in Windows 3.1, you can actually start up the computer and start Windows without actually logging on to the network. And you can see we have this Log On Off button. Well, if I click that, a dialog comes up, and I have my username Trent, and I just have to type a password, and there, I am now logged on, and in a few seconds it should show up on the ThinkPad here. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Now, in the original Windows installation on this computer, uh, it logged on automatically without me having to type a password or anything, but I can't get it to do that this time. Uh, and I don't know why, but, uh, oh well.
So, uh, if I hit refresh here, fix my camera shutter speed. If I hit refresh, there it is. It's called Turbo 486, and we can log on. Uh, that's the my I just named it G. That's the hard drive. And there we go. There's the entire contents of the hard drive. I have these sound files here. Let's uh, crank up the volume and play Oof Free. That sounds about right as rain. So uh, yeah, very, very useful. I can uh, download files off the internet on this computer and uh, send them right to this computer. But that's not all. When this computer is connected to the ThinkPad, it can go through the ThinkPad's wireless card and access the internet. I have installed on here Microsoft Internet Explorer 5.01 the last version to run on Windows 3.1. So, I'll turn on the ThinkPad's wireless here. So we'll open Internet Explorer. And whoever would have thought that, uh, yeah, it just loaded 2cows.com. For some reason, uh, the people, 2cows were the people who packaged Internet Explorer. So, uh, they put their own home page here. But I, as you can see, it loaded it. Not very well, but it did. I can load google.com. And there it is. No problem at all. And, uh, if I search the Maritime Man... There you can see my YouTube page. Now, uh, let's see how far it'll load my YouTube page, because it won't do much. Google's the only page it fully renders successfully. Did the title. Got the little animated earth there. Uh, oh dear. Oh, that's not very nice. Yeah, close it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. I'll go to another page, one that I know it should be able to rent. Oh, come on. It would appear this whole computer has uh, crashed. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to uh, uh, end Windows and restart it. But uh, I do know one other website that it should be able to load correctly. And that's the website that I demonstrated on the NEC handheld PC, hpcmonex.net. Alright, let's try this again, Internet Explorer. Oh, I gotta log on to the network. Log on, please. Blah, 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 blah. And now, hpc.net. Dot, dot, met, dot, net. I don't know if it's actually connected yet. Oh, yeah, it has. There it is. And, of course, this is an all-text website. There you go. So, that's all I'll bother showing to that. Look at the About page. Internet Explorer 5, 1999. Based on NCSA Mosaic. Huh, that's weird. I did not know Internet Explorer was based on Mosaic. That was weird. Uh, next, I have applications here. Stuff from DOS, QBasic, Antivirus, Backup, Undelete, MS DOS Editor. Won't bother with that, but here I have MATLAB. Now, most of you perhaps do not know what MATLAB is. I do know what MATLAB is, and I can tell you it's very cool. MATLAB is a very high level programming language. Um, and I had to learn it in my first semester of university. I had a class completely dedicated to how to use MATLAB. Unfortunately, uh, in my second semester, I had to learn C. Um, and unfortunately, because I learned C, I forget quite a bit of what I, what I learned of MATLAB. 
But uh, nonetheless, I will open up MATLAB, uh, which by the way is still being developed today. And uh, it's, you can buy it for about $100. And this is MATLAB, I believe, 4.2C, which is the uh, last version to run on Windows 3.1. And uh, MATLAB goes way back. Uh, MATLAB way back in the early DOS days, in the early 1980s, uh, MATLAB was around. But uh, basically, uh, very fundamentally, MATLAB is a big text-based calculator. For example, if I put 2 plus 3, it gives me 5. But uh, MATLAB, like I said, it's, it's a high-level programming language, but it's a programming language nonetheless. And it's incredibly useful, and you can do a lot of cool things with it. And it has a lot of features that are shared with other programming languages, like Java and C. Um, for example, let's say I could put x equals 5. You can set variables here, and you can do it all in real time, like I'm doing right now. And y equals 7. And let's say z equals x times y and it should give me 35 which it does but you can do tons of cool things you can uh, make windows a graphical user interface with buttons and and text fields and stuff uh, you can do graphs you can do other sorts of graphics you can do anything and uh, you do it all by uh, typing text here now I have a lot of uh, if I open up file manager here of course, I wrote a lot of programs in the class where I learned about MATLAB, uh, which that's the name of the class there. And But unfortunately, they don't run on here for some reason. Of course, I compiled them in MATLAB version 2011, I think, but I would think they should be able to run in this old version of MATLAB, but uh, they don't. It just gives an error. But uh, I'll open one up here. Um, Notepad, uh, C, CS1003. There, there's a very simple program I wrote. Uh, you put in a year and it tells you if that year is a leap year or not. Pretty simple, just basic math. But, uh, yeah, actually, I'll open a more complicated one. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, yes, here's a more complicated one. Uh, yeah, what this program does. Gosh, I forget. I gotta look at it and see. Good grief. I, I forget what this does, and the title doesn't tell me much more. Um, I should have wrote a description. I know it inputs test numbers in the form of a vector, which is a single dimensional array. Estimate square root, and it's, it, it, it's, it estimates the square roots of each value in the vector. Hi, it just calculates the square root uh, using an estimation algorithm. That's all it does. All this to estimate the square root when MATLAB itself has a square root function built in. Uh, if I do squirt 25, it gives me 5. Now, it does have a demo uh, that I'll run here, a demo program. Intro. Ah, yes. Here it's drawing a 3D graph at 20 megahertz. Fun. MATLAB, picture the power. Ah, uh, yes, I'm going to turn turbo back on. There's a single dimensional array. B equals the array A plus 2. So it takes all the elements in the array and adds them by 2. There's a graph. There's another graph. Another graph. I learned how to do all this stuff. There's a, 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 a two-dimensional array. Very fun to learn to use. Um, and being an electrical engineer, I'm going to be using it a lot more. I have a class uh, next year that uh, is a continuation of uh, the class I took on MATLAB. It's called Digital Systems, which sounds fun and very complicated. But, uh, yeah, I did some pretty fancy stuff in MATLAB. I'll have to... I might make a video of that someday, not sure. But, uh, 
it's it's very fun. People like uh, some friends of mine who actually know how to program properly. I don't. I'm not a programmer. I'm a hardware guy. Um, they despise MATLAB because they it just sucks compared to what they know how to use, which is Java and C++ and all that crap, which I don't really care about. But uh, for people like me, I, I like MATLAB. It's pretty cool. I used to know a bit of GW Basic, but uh, I don't anymore. Anyway, we'll get out of that. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, close that. Really, that's about it. Um, that's, I've shown you pretty much everything I wanted to show you. Uh, this video is running on 55 minutes now, uh, before editing. And, uh, I think that's all I'll show you for this video. Um, I'm going to make a continuation video, probably where I'll demonstrate more programs running on Windows 3.1 and there's also some DOS stuff I want to show you and what I'd also like to do is get Windows 98 running on this which is the last version of Windows that runs properly on this computer and uh, just show you some uh, demonstration stuff of that, show you how well a uh, 486 gets along on the internet and uh, stuff like that but uh, until then there is a software demonstration of the MCA Turbo 486 computer. Really love this machine. Uh, really nice. It's never given me any trouble except when the hard drive corrupted for no reason, but uh, that was a software thing probably. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this little demonstration. I sure enjoyed showing it to you. And uh, until next time, I'll see you guys later.